Today on the show, we talk about how to bring innovation into the massive healthcare industry. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the show. Today, we've got Hubert Zajcek on. He is the CEO and co-founder of Health Wildcatters, a highly successful health-related incubator here in Dallas, Texas, and they are doing just amazing work, bringing in companies and really not just giving them financial help, but mentorship and resources and guidance all along the way to grow into a, a truly viable company in their own right. You know, it's hard enough starting a company and helping other companies start um, in general, you know, a, a, a across the board, across all kinds of industries. When it comes to healthcare, there's an entire added layer of caution and regulation and concern over safety that you have to take into account. You know, it takes a very specific set of skills in order to navigate those waters, whether you're doing it for your company, but especially if you're doing it for 50 other companies, right, uh, over the years. So I'm excited to bring this interview to you. Jump in and let's hear from Hubert Zajcik. Welcome to the show. Nice to be here. Are your, are your doubts and fears being realized at this moment <laughs> before we head off? Well, I mean, you promised to drive us to a brewery, right? Or, this is a brewery tour, right? I'm going to ride you Uber. After, after uh, driving, never along with... Oh, of course not. No, yes. just, you're the designated driver. That's why I'm here. <laughs> That's the only way I could get him to agree. <laughs> Hubert, you are, I mean, been involved in the startup community here in Dallas. Um, but very specifically with Health Wildcatters. You guys are just started your new round of folks. Um, give me a little insight into Health Wildcatters and what it's all about. Yeah, sure. We're a um, healthcare seed accelerator and fund. We got started four years ago, and uh, we've, we've now accelerated about 40 startups. Uh, we've got another batch of uh, nine in this year, so we'll be oh, over 50 incredible. that we've invested in. And uh, we're across the board, so this is not just um, not just health IT. We're also devices. Actually, health IT is a number one number one category. Health devices, medical devices, number two, diagnostics. And we also take others that we're interested in. It, it depends on whether the the leadership and the mentors can add value to mm -hmm. the startup. And so, we've and, got different ones too. And for for those who don't know. Describe an accelerator to us, and then and then your particular flavor of that. Yeah, sure. So we're specializing in healthcare. Um, two of us are physicians by training. Uh, the the four four partners that got this um, uh, got this off the ground. Um, we're all deep in healthcare, and um, a healthcare accelerator is basically a micro VC with a program attached to it. So we make a decision to invest in you. Uh, and that's usually thirty thousand dollars, and we get stock uh, in return. Okay. And but but we don't just do that. Almost by definition, you're uh, you're a startup that needs other resources as well. And a lot of VCs and professional investors will do this. They will help you. And here it's a more formal way. It's a three month program. Um, you move to Dallas. Uh, eight of the nine this year are not from Dallas. Oh wow. Okay. Um, so uh, you move to us, and then we have a, a program. We put you through, we put you in touch with as many mentors as we can and wrap as many resources as we can around you to help you figure out all the bits and pieces that you haven't yet or that you haven't had time to figure out yet. Cool, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, that's just so valuable. And, I, and I, I know firsthand from folks I've had on the show from Startup Dallas who have gone through mm -hmm. not only Accelerator, but yours specifically, Everyone I talk to speaks so so highly of it, and I can only imagine the boost because, like you say, the money is a tiny little piece of the full value in that. And so many so many startups across the board are just okay. What next? <laughs> what's right. what's that next step? What's what should I be doing right now? Because there's a hundred things you could be doing. And so, tell me back in your history a little bit, and, and 
getting you to this point. So you're you're a physician by trade as well? Yeah, I, I um, uh, born and raised in Austria and uh, went to med school there. Came over here to do research, was uh, on faculty at UT Southwestern uh, in nephrology, which is kidney research and cell okay. biology, which is molecular biology and subcellular research. So. So definitely uh, in the weeds. Um, <laughs> got got an MBA at SMU uh, wow. at night, and um, and what was that? What prompted that? What was uh, the... really? I, I so as a so I, so so you already caught that caught that you know from, as a physician you're dealing with patients. Now I was was in research by choice, and I loved it. Um, but I was working with um, not so much with patients, clinical research, but more basic science research, which is um, you know a lot drier. You don't have as many. You have mice to talk to, uh, or cell cultures. <laughs> right. you know, so I love right. people. So uh, that was uh, a uh, something I desired. And the other thing you I got to observe was just um, both on the research side, it is hard to get your message across. So you'd say you're mm. working on something, and I noticed that when I was talking to my even my dad, who's a physician. What what do you do? And you'd get into this long explanation of how you're doing research on this thing that you know requires a book checker first before you get to what you actually do. So it's always, yeah, yeah okay, so he's doing, I know all my friends that uh, that I kn knew had trouble explaining to their parents or friends uh, what they actually do. So so there's, it's really hard to get your message across. So this is a skill that physicians actually are innately, um, uh, have to have a skill in because you need to be able to communicate with, with patients and give them a chance to understand a very complex issue and uh, enough so that they can make an informed decision. And so That's a great point, this, yeah. you, as a physician, you're a translator of sorts. Uh, and so and so it is with science and business. And so I discovered that on the on the business side, I, I, I like that interplay and, and found that I can usually boil it down to um, what matters. And that's very important for startups. And so oh, yeah. through business school and SMU, I discovered that the business piece that I liked was going to be in entrepreneurship, okay. and um, and so that's I got involved in a medical device uh, incubator in Frisco, and ran that together with another guy for a few years, and then started Health Lockheader. So that's really combining those skills in a way. Um, now what we have now is also a fund. So not not just can we give advice, we can also at least give you enough money to. Uh, work uh, for a few months. Yeah, justify coming down here. Exactly. Yeah. Mo again, most are not from Dallas, which is, um, you know, it's, it's great. We we don't really care where you're from as long <laughs> as you're good. Right. What are some of those criteria that, that lead to, to that selection each year? Sure. Uh, I mean, we, we. I mean, as a as an investment, and and, and our accelerator is private privately backed so okay. angel investors uh, from all over but you know mostly from Dallas and, 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 and surrounding states are, are investing and pooling money and allowing us to make these investments and we're making them together my partners and I are also investors in each of our funds but but as such uh, number one we need to back companies that can um, grow rapidly that are what we think uh, venture backable that are um, uh, rapid growth technology firms. Um, number two is, uh, with that comes uh, a backable entrepreneur. So someone that is probably the easiest way to say it is coachable, which just means it's a reasonable person that will know what they know and then ask for what they don't know. Right. And and so this can be. Uh, you don't want someone that uh, takes all the advice because that just shows you that they have no discernment or uh, any decision-making skills. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, you certainly yeah. don't want someone who takes none of the advice. I mean, that's also, <laughs> right. there are more choice words for such people <laughs> that I'm not going to say on air. Uh, I've, I've you, met some of those people. Yeah, we all have. It's lovely people. <laughs> they know it all already. So can't have that either because, I mean, just when you look at a value proposition is, we want people that we can help. Well, if they, if it just boils down to an investment, financial investment, that's not what we're here for. Yeah. We're looking for investments where our money com mostly paired with what we can add, adds up to a win-win for everyone. And so that's what we do. That's great. And I hear that from, from so many VCs that the investments they do make, they at least half of the decision is the person, not the idea. It's it the is. team, it's the people. 
think that's so so valuable. For sure, it's it's the number one thing. I mean, this yeah. is a, a people game. You uh, it, you know, if you if you don't see this person executing, you already lost it. I mean, there isn't. There's one person usually that leads it. There's several support people. Sometimes it's a duo. Mm -hmm. But if it, you know, if you can't get yourself to back these two folks, then uh, I mean, who's who's gonna you know who's gonna take this over? So it's a no go. Right. It's a very personal thing. Um, but obviously, it needs to be a, a great idea or a great a company. And in in most cases, in our uh, cohort, if you when you're a healthcare IT company, you actually already selling. So you're not coming mm -hmm. to prove out something that might work one day you're usually already beyond that and you're already ah. selling. Now, you might not know how to get to your customers, you might still have to tweak your business model, there many things to be worked out. If you're a, uh, so you have revenues, um, if you are a consumer goods company, a healthcare consumer goods company, you are definitely selling. You okay. have product, you probably want to raise money to expand, you probably want to um, f figure out how to wrap, uh, grow faster. But again, you're selling. If you're a medical device company, that's obviously not the case yet. So the medical gotcha. device companies that are generally in our cohort will be companies that are figuring out their FDA pathway. They usually do have patents or patents pending. Okay. So they have gotten certain you know, they've gotten milestones. Milestones, they yeah. They've gotten down the road some, but there's a lot to be figured out still. So I think this maybe breaks some conception by some that uh, you know, the nine companies coming to us, they all just uh, made a little it's note a, on, the, on the back of an, uh, of an envelope <laughs> right. or a napkin they uh, had an what, idea what they would like to do in life. Right. This is way beyond that. So these people are really there to accelerate. But when you think about it, an accelerator can accelerate an early stage or a later stage company. It doesn't True. really imply where you are. And certainly they're not super late. Um, that, that doesn't happen as often. Sure. That's great. So does... does being where we are, how much does that play into? Because we obviously have a, a really strong medical community here in Dallas. What, how much does that play in sort of mentorship and potential helping them, you know, find clients and those and become vendors yeah. to some of those? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I mean, Dallas, Texas as a whole is, is a great place to start a business. Number one, I, I would, I, I read somewhere recently this. The, the true America you know, is still here. I, I often feel that way. I'm not from here, um, but I believe that it's probably one of the most entrepreneurial states still. And um, I know on the healthcare side, uh, Dallas in particular is extremely competitive. There are, depending on how you, many hospital groups you want to count, <laughs> seven to 10 competing with each other. Major, uh, major, major ones. ones. <laughs> uh, and so they need to show quality. Uh, there's a shift from the patient. I always say the patient has run out of patience. So the, <laughs> the healthcare consumer uh, wants choices, and so yeah. uh, when you when you you know when you have a choice to, to, to buy a car, and you know some people will only buy it from Sewell because they want that service, mm -hmm. and so it is uh, with hotels, and so it is increasing with healthcare too. You want it to be nice, and you want innovation, and so there's competition along those lines to make. Um, uh, make make your place better and to be an early adopter and show that you're on the forefront of innovation. So there's a lot of interest in this. Uh, physicians in, in, in Texas and in Dallas, of course, as well, are amongst the most independent and entrepreneurial in the country still. And then lastly, what you need uh, in the mix is successful entrepreneurs in your, kind of in your niche. And uh, there are a lot of uh, successful healthcare entrepreneurs in, in Dallas. Most are not household names um, that have built successful businesses that are interested in investments and also in uh, giving back to the community. Oh, they yeah. are uh, in a position to do that, in a position to um, give off their time as well. And in many cases, you couldn't buy their time. I mean, you, you couldn't afford to. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. That's so, that's so great. And to, to put together this infrastructure that brings all these elements together, I think is, I think is phenomenal. And, and certainly to, it's one thing to do it once and see what happens. It's another thing to do it cohort after cohort. After. Sure. Sure. And when we're, you know, we're still the classic cohort and we're not, you know, there are 
there are great accelerators out there um, in uh, also in the healthcare area. There's Healthbox and there's Rock Health and there's um, Blueprint Health and, and a few others that do good work. Everyone's a bit different. Uh, every city and region uh, has a flavor and everyone has uh, a little bit of different approach usually. And um, so we're not the only ones doing this, but in our region, uh, we are, and uh, it is certainly not easy to put together. That that I'll say for sure. It, it requires okay. a lot of goodwill by a lot of people uh, to to um, to support such uh, such a um, um, an endeavor. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's uh, it's also very fulfilling and fun because people innately love these startups. They love to see new things. They love the enthusiasm that these start of spring and and so it is for us as we work there and help them and see them literally make a company uh and, and give it a real a real shot at it that's so, so exciting that's really cool and I, I can only imagine what it takes to oversee that and then but to manage all these moving parts <laughs> to this over and over i mean how much how much is is it human and how much is it you know tools and, and tactics and everything that kind of go into that well I, I would say we definitely have improved over the years on our on our ability to uh, manage the groups uh, the teams and to give them ever more access to more things uh, as we deploy um, efficiency tools we, you know, we, we free up more of our time so we can have more one-on-one -on -one time I'll say this though, it's, it's, it's definitely important for us as well uh, to connect with each of the teams um, you know, deeply mm -hmm. because when you're this early, there are going to be things that you need to figure out and there are going to be things that you probably don't want to make a big deal out of that you haven't figured out yet. Mm. And we're in the same boat. We bought common shares just like you, the founder has. We have the same interests as you. We want to help you. Yeah. So it requires trust. And as such, our goal is to be worthy of your trust, number one, by doing right by all the startups, of course. Um, that's our reputation. Certainly. And, and number two, it, it requires, yeah, to sometimes admit some things that might not be as, as glorious or wonderful as you would want them all to sound once you're, <laughs> once you're polished. So there's right. some things you need to figure out. So we need to get to this point where you're willing to share some of those with us, mm -hmm. with us so we can help you fix them. Well, and especially because there's a lot of things that are human things in that, that maybe have nothing to do with the business that you can see well, only when you get to know somebody, you can see, you know what? I bet they're going through this. I bet, I bet right. mentally this is where they are with this issue. And that's the only way to, to get to those and get in front of those. Absolutely, we, we, uh, a lot of what we do is, um, is simple best practices, I would say, all across in business. So many of these people come from academia or other settings where they didn't have to sell securities. We didn't have to oh, gotcha. uh, okay. be, in, be involved in business transactions or deal with certain professions. So we endeavor to calibrate them, to show them what is normal and what's acceptable. And, and to speak um, the language. And to speak the language yeah. and to also know the nuances of the language. You, mm. Let's say you, you tell someone that you're raising funds and you tell someone, ah, oh, I raised a million, I need another half a million. Well, you need to understand that that has very specific meaning to an investor. You raised a million means you have a million dollars in your bank account right now. So, for instance, and if you meet this person next week or a friend of him or her, and you tell the same story and say, oh, I've got 750, I need another 750, you can't, <laughs> this will, people will find out. You, you need You're to right. know what your numbers is. So, so th there's some things that you need to know matter greatly where, uh, as a casual observer, you might say, oh, well, you know, it's What's the difference right, here? And, the, yeah. and this change or that change, but to be precise with your language is gonna, is gonna win your friends and, and, and people that interact with us or our startups know that they have learned that. Now, can I tell you that every single one of them is going to, to adhere to that? No, I'm, sure. I'm not their, their parent. I got <laughs> right. kids, but I'm not their parent. <laughs> but, but I can tell you that they have learned it. And, and so again, this is not something they, on purpose, are trying to uh, mislead anyone. It's just, you need to know the rules. Right. And so some of those things you just didn't even know 
are really important. Right. And they can sink you. And, and if you do some of those things wrong, unbeknownst to you, you can lose all the trust uh, or faith of the investor in you or, or, or a strategic person that could help you, or you name it. So there's a lot of things that are very, very simple and you'd think, good gosh, are we really talking about it? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> and then there's very uh, specialized things like how to deal with uh, regulatory concerns uh, and how to be careful with such, you know. Because it's a whole different layer that a lot of accelerators will never have to go through. No, I mean, for healthcare ex uh, companies, I'm, I'm self-serving, but I, I certainly believe that you have to be in a healthcare accelerator. Uh, yeah. You, you, I mean, look at 23andMe or some of the examples out there where they got into major trouble because they said, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna make the FDA do this or that. Or, <laughs> and, and here's the thing, I, I have all the respect in the world for you going out there and kicking it up. And you know, we need innovators who are on the edge and doing sure. things. There's just also an appreciation for um, in, especially in healthcare, for for safety and security and the sanctity of life. Yeah, and it's so at another level. From it is. A, it's else. another yeah. level, and and kicking it up at that level is 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 as a it it can just it, it I would let's say it rarely works, mm -hmm. and even with someone who had billions of dollars didn't work. So you got to be careful there and see what is it you're trying to challenge. And that is tough because it needs challenging. It does. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's a it's a system that my goodness needs challenging but to your point there it's it's going to require some very specialized uh, what i will tell you yeah what i would tell you in that case is we would help you understand what it is you're getting yourself into <laughs> yeah uh, right so is this a battle that we you know we're investors in you uh did i invest in you to overhaul the fda no, I did not. I promise you, I did not. Do I, you know, do I want you to be successful? Yes. Can we be successful within the frameworks of this regulatory environment? Well, hopefully, the answer is yo. Yes, we we made our decision. Based right. That's on why that. we. Yeah. So that's why we backed you. So uh, again, there's different tactics. Generally, uh, it'll be something like let's not be crafty around this. Just like when you when you strike a deal. I mean, Jason, you're driving me around for tw 20 minutes or 30 minutes today. This is fun. I mean, if you're driving me up to McKinney and drop me off there, <laughs> we'd have a problem, <laughs> right? So, like, dude, I need to ride home. So, so, um, so, so it's the same there. There's you know, an understanding that understanding yeah. and 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 know what you're challenging. So, hey, if if for some reason it, this is a starter that absolutely needs to shake it up, well, let's let's know what we're getting into, mm -hmm. and um, I will certainly, uh, as a physician, I can't ever endorse something that's not safe for patients, but. Um, mm -hmm. But challenging the status quo needs to be something you do on purpose, not by accident right. later on discovering that or you know, is, your business model requires it all of a sudden. Right. Or is marketing necessary? Right, right. <laughs> right. Not with healthcare. Oh, well, and there yeah. are many rules that can get you into trouble without you knowing it, mm -hmm. right? So you can, making certain claims about um, your what your device can do. Well, you've got to prove those. You can't just go out there and say it. <laughs> right. it, 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 it you know, if you, if you, if you say you're, you've got the best lemonade, you know, how can you argue that? Right. You, you say something about having health effects, you got to prove these or you're in violation of certain laws. So right. these are things that are, uh, you just got to know, again, something that you didn't intend can get you into a lot of trouble in healthcare because of the regulatory framework. And, and a lot of it, we have to admit too, a lot of it is there uh, this is a barrier to entry, which also mm -hmm. means that if you do it right, it is a barrier that works for you uh, oh, exactly. in a classic business sense, meaning that you have jumped through these hurdles. It's, it's not as easy for somebody else to do the same thing. That's a great point. Um, so that's yeah. important as well. So, Absolutely. So over the, the, the last few years, what are some... What are some of the folks who have come through who, not necessarily, you know, like this was the most successful that would, but, but have really stood out in, in terms of how innovative they were or, or how great the team was? Who are some of those folks who have, who have stood out? Yeah, I want you to do a lot of more of this while we're driving. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, does, that make you, does that make you nervous? Sorry. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No. <laughs> I've watched, I, it's funny because I tell people, I watch these back and I'll notice like going down the highway, I'm sitting there and I'm talking with my hands. And as a viewer, I'm like, good God, man, put your hands on the wheel. <laughs> no, 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 this is all safe. Um, so, so innovative people. So when we've had people, um, we've had companies join us from as far away as Israel 
And, and I'll tell you a story there. It's half of the reason this person made it in the program was I talked to her on a Friday and she wasn't sure. She said, well, you know, can you promise that I'll get in if I come to this final <laughs> presentation? I said, no, I can't. I mean, there's going to be 25 and we'll pull 12, the 12 best out of it. And she said, wow. This is a lot of money, and I understood that, and said, "Well, you're right. I mean, this is a hard decision to make." Because they, they had to be here. They for had to that. fly here, yeah. Yep. So, and then can we do it remotely? And we said, "We really don't want that." And plus, you're not going to meet our network, and we need you. So, I get a call on Saturday. This was a Tuesday event. I said, "Hubert, I got a ticket. I'll be there Tuesday." I said, "Oh, awesome." And I mean, half of the reason this person ended up in the program was because of that. Wow. This was somebody who was demonstrated. She's gonna go for it. Yeah. Uh, she took a risk. She made an assessment. She went for it. She could have been wrong. Yeah. Um, so it was about the person, and we see that sometimes, and taking you know a calculated business risk, and so that was something amazing. We've seen, of course, we've had many companies uh, get their uh, patents issued or you know meet certain milestones along the way. Um, we have some that are selling medical devices now that are literally having an impact uh, with their devices or their health IT innovation. But as far as impact goes, you know, there's probably not an organ in the body that our startups haven't touched or aren't touching in some important uh, and meaningful way. That's beautiful. I love that. So what's, what's next? What's the evolution here? Is it, is it simply continuing on this path or are there some different shifts that you see in the future? Yeah, so, so as far as the, uh, the program goes, you know, we, we see that going the way it is right now. Uh, Bandwidth-wise, we're able to, you know, to sustain it the way we are. We have a couple of things that are new for us. We, we moved into a new facility last year. So that means there's 25 startups on location all year round. M many of wow. them are our graduates, but some of them are not. So we're also able to impact uh, the local innovation community uh, by providing an innovative space that, that gives them some of the tools and the connectivity that they don't have just on their own out mm -hmm. there. So that's fun and fulfilling. Uh, and we also have a, a growing list of, of sponsors that want to help us uh, do more. So when I talked about the investors at the beginning, well, they're there, they're backing, you know, 10, 12 startups that we're investing in and they're paying for us doing that and it's a lot of work to get the right companies in, attract the best and then work with them and make them successful. They've raised a lot of money as a, as a result of, of uh, going through the program and that's what the investors want. But, but what sponsoring organizations do is really help us build out the, um, the Dallas location and allow us to do things like in the, the community. physical Yeah, space allow us to do things in the community, allow us to do educational series, allow us to do um, outreach, allow us to do support other nonprofit organizations that deal in health innovation. So we're, we're, uh, we're able to do more and more because of that support and that's definitely uh, very rewarding to see because that, that allows us to do more. As far as uh, outreach go, goes or growth goes, we, we could see uh, several pathways. Uh, one of them is simply uh, for us to raise a bigger fund that allows mm -hmm. us to do more. We raise one every year right now, and uh, we believe there are some others that are interested in supporting health innovation at an early age um, with our help, and we certainly are, are looking at that, including our ability to do follow-on funding of the startups we have to come through the program. Oh, nice. And then number two is to partner with other organizations to bring our program to other parts of the country or specifically support a, um, a cause or a specific interest. So let's say something that we would do that's attached to solving a, a set of problems uh, with our skill set and our machines gotcha. that we could plug into and say, well, let's work on, on pediatric innovation or mm -hmm. something in the in the aging space, something like that. So yeah, that's really specified. Those, exactly. Goals. So sub-specializing okay. from from healthcare into an even smaller segment, with uh, together with a partnering organization. So we're looking at that pretty pretty strongly right now, and uh, so that's those are kind of some of the things we're looking at doing. Uh, also, the connectivity to other accelerators is increasing. We're drawing some of our best uh, companies now from pre-accelerator programs from other states. Oh, interesting. So we've got okay. good relationships with 
organizations that are um, getting into a certain stage, but recognize that in, in that region, the startup ecosystem isn't strong enough to support that next step, to gotcha. get on that seed round and A round. So why not, and that's kudos to them, why not play a pro proactive role in getting them into one of the top healthcare innovation hubs in the country? Oh yeah. Let them grow there, have them be part of the fabric there and have a second headquarters or, or and be a part of that. And then either come back or, or hire back home or you know have some sort of an effect back where, where that pre-accelerator program is, pre-accelerator program is. So we're, we're doing some of that as well, and, um, and we like that, and like oh, to yeah. work with other entities where we can basically um, help both sides. So describe to me, I mean, I guess really get it, if you can get into specifics on, on certain companies that, that have produced some of those results that you described to us. Right, yeah, sure. Um, so we have, like I said, a kind of in descending order, medical device, um, sorry, health IT, medical device companies, and also healthcare consumer goods. Uh, maybe in, in, in this year's cohort, which is the most recent one, we have three that fall into the uh, healthcare consumer goods space, which is a, a probiotic drink, a uh, kind of an eyeglass innovation uh, company, and, a, and a, actually a toothbrush innovation company, which is kind of <laughs> new for us to have uh, more healthcare consumer goods. We have a diagnostic that is a better way to diagnose prostate cancer. Oh, wow. We have a, a better communi a communication device for people that have to wear a CPAP mask, which is a uh, basically what you have to do when you have a, 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 you know, can't breathe, you mm -hmm. have to wear this. You can't talk through those masks, so they oh, have a yeah. communication device. We have a company that uh, makes a better access point for dialysis patients, so uh, this is hard to explain in a minute, but <laughs> suffice it to say that there are a lot of people that have uh, diabetes and the loose function of their kidneys. So this is something that they will need. Uh, this is a better way to do it. And we have a, 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 a wearable that um, can measure your hydration levels this year, so a medical device that can do that. And and I'm forgetting one, they'll kill me when they see that. <laughs> um, we have one that'll come to me in a second. But in the previous cohorts, we've had companies as far reaching as uh, for instance, Scary Loop, that is a a way to help you navigate the maze of long-term care and assisted living. And they're and doing fantastic. They're doing right fantastic. Now. They've yep. raised you know, all those companies I mentioned have raised over a million or two. Uh, Lantern Pharma, which is an uh, artificial intelligence for, uh, company that, that deals in the pharma space, that helps find um, companion diagnostics for drugs, which means you can now go and say this is a drug that we do this testing with you and you can take it once you roll into the cohort that is not being harmed by this drug. So there's a lot of drugs that were being kicked out because they weren't as effective uh, or harmful to some people because of genetic changes. We've had a, a company in that uh, Socrates Health that is a, a non-invasive glucometer company, a medical device of course, and a company, uh, a couple of companies in the, in the health IT space that help physicians uh, get reimbursed and this is a, a, a tough thing for some physicians to stay independent and do all fulfill all the rules and regulations in um, bringing their companies uh, uh, getting getting their revenues in and don't have the staff and bandwidth to do it they're getting squeezed and squeezed so we're certainly uh, appreciative of that the practice of medicine should be mostly you practicing medicine yeah so there's a software that well, helps them and that's 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 really great, and that's that's where my mind went immediately when you talked about getting an MBA way back as a physician, because that's where my mind went immediately was how important that is to doctors and physicians who, much like you know the artist who wants to go sell their work, they just want to do the work. Physicians want to be physicians, right. but there's an entire business that has to happen around that. So that's that's really great. Any tools that can help that and companies that can help that is yeah. is really good. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. It's a very diverse group, and um, does it come from all over? I think from over twenty states by now, and um, some of them are now headquartered here in Dallas. So that's oh, not that's, that's not not necessarily a requirement. We we certainly have them here for three months, but mm -hmm. some decide to stay or or continue their work here. 
and we love that of course we can do more for them here mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes there are good reasons for them to be wherever they came from and have a second headquarter here and that's uh, that's fine uh, with us too as long as we have sure. some sort of a way to continue to help them which is what we desire that's do. a really that's really interesting because that's a, what a great economic impact you're having on the area here locally here in Dallas by by doing that bringing those companies in because it does make so much more sense when they do get their beginning stages here but plus all the connections and business that and resources that, that you're providing so much of them are here uh, so it makes all the, the difference in the world to stay here that's that's wonderful so I, I would definitely love uh, for you to let us know what's the best way for different entities to stay in touch with you and follow along because I know there's some different ones so obviously you would like more people to apply but there's right. also potential investors potential sponsors yeah absolutely so we we're I think that the simplest way to say it if you have a passion for healthcare innovation or you believe you're you have a calling that space whatever your motivation may be that you are in a healthcare professional and you would like to to contribute in some sort of way or you have an interest in in helping specific startups or you have an idea uh, we have a, a various events where we help eke that out and help you define it and uh, we'll, we'll always f try to find ways to help you on on the company side we are we have to you've seen it with the 20th floor of a building that is you know a great uh, place that can house lots of events and and we can do a lot more there and so what we're looking for are uh, always looking for partners that are wanting to help put Dallas on the map in healthcare innovation. We have all the pieces here. Uh, we have even a facility now that can accommodate all that. But we could do we can do more. The more partners we have, we have that uh, that play a role and want to play a role in healthcare innovation. And so those are sponsors, or sponsoring organizations to help us do more in the community. Uh, and lastly. Of course, uh, uh, we have lots of mentors, and uh, many of those are also our investors. But mentors play a, a huge role in our organization. They make that one phone call that makes that company, gets them their first beta trial, gets them that first seminal uh, contract that oh, yeah. makes that big difference. And I see that happen every single day. That's and beautiful. again, that's, that's something special. You kind of need to have that place where all these things happen. And we have it already here. And uh, we're just uh, a big, a big city. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, this, so yeah. There's so much room to grow, which is which is that much more powerful in yeah. the whole in the whole thing. Well, I'm excited about what, what you've got going on. I can't wait to see where you take it. Well, from thanks. Here. Thanks for doing the show. It's fun. Absolutely. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Take care. And now I'm going to take you to McKinney and drop you off. <laughs> Perfect. You know, I'm really impressed with what Hubert has put together with his co-founders and, and with his team to really ultimately change people's lives. And whether it's the economy here in Dallas, the specific companies that he's helping grow down to the patients that those companies ultimately help. Um, I think it's, I think it's amazing. And I think for as, as successful as health wildcatters has been, um, and as successful, as Hubert has been running that organization, I honestly think they're they're just scratching the surface of what's possible, especially in a town like Dallas, which has all of the major players in in, in medicine. It feels like, um, and certainly a, a massive amount of growth here in business and in in the economy, and a whole lot of people looking to do good and. I think ultimately that's what Hubert and Health Wildcatters are doing all the way down the line. So make sure you check out healthwildcatters.com and see even more of what, what they're all about and, and who they're ultimately helping out there. And if you're any of those folks that Hubert described, they're, they're looking for, whether it's a, a company looking to incubate or um, a potential sponsor or someone looking to invest, make sure you dig in there and, and reach out. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. If you like interviews like this, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes, thank you so much. Uh, subscribe there and leave us a review if you get a chance. And we'll see you on the next one. It's Saturday night.
It was Saturday night and I'm feeling kind of silly When the coat on cause the air was chilly But I'ma make my way out to the record spot Gotta find some new breaks for the beats to rock I gotta come with the flavor like some lifesavers Or now and later Dr. Beat Maker If I'm a player it's like you take deck And if you miss the gig then take a rain check Stacks of wax piled high to the ceiling Need a U-Haul truck if I would think about stealing But it's not my steed so I commence with the digging No kidding Something that'll keep the beats hitting what I'm getting so much to choose from, bro.